who aren't here. So thank you guys for joining us this morning. Um, we just met together um, this week just to kind of just talk about this e-learning thing, especially now that we are going um, to be doing it for the rest of the year, um, we found out this week. And so um, we know that you guys are navigating this. And um, as a church, we just want to encourage and support you. Um, we have a lot of teachers in our um, congregation and even people who like retired teachers or people who just have passions for things that we want to just link them up with your students um, we're brainstorming tutoring options like we um, just kind of want to feel out where you guys are and where our church is and how we can continue to meet the needs of our people and so we can sit around and talk for hours about what we think that you guys need um, but we just want to hear from you guys what you guys think that you need so uh, we'll have a survey that I'll send um, after this and I'm going to send to all the families um, that just kind of gets the age of your kids and kind of what what different areas that you need help in and so um, Mallory is gonna share a little bit with us today and Melody and then I met with Michelle Fulber yesterday and so I'm going to share my screen with a video for her that's just um, really encouraging she was personally really encouraging to me yesterday and I know that she's encouraged a lot of people um, in her experience with homeschooling but also like her faith is amazing and she always points it back to Jesus and so um, Mallory will go first and share with us a little bit and then I'll show Michelle's video and then Melody uh, will share her piece um, use the chat if you guys have any questions we would love to be able to answer your questions so feel feel, feel free to ask questions in there um, and we'll try to get to them in the end if not then it just gauges um, what else we can do and how we can continue to support you in this so Take it away. Melody. All right. So my topic is um, like teaching and technology. And then what are some extras that you can do? So um, I'm just going to share with you some things I've sent out to parents at our school, as well as um, some of the teachers and, and um, that joyous stuff. So um, first thing you should be doing every day, technology wise, is hop on your, your child's LMS. So if they're using Canvas or Schoology or whatever they're doing, and just browse through what their assignments are for the day. I know, like Steve said, that we have um, a lot of schools are using Canvas. So if you're looking at it, you right away can see, do, it, do my child, does my child have assignments today? Are they doing quizzes? Are they just watching a movie? And that should all be listed for them. It's really nice to look at that as well because then you can actually see the concepts that they're covering for the day. So you can be like, ooh, they're watching a movie on Main Idea. I don't really know how to talk about that. So maybe as they're working, if they have a question, you can in the background just make sure you have you've looked up some ideas on main idea or if they're studying fractions and what you can do if they need assistance for you if you're not completely sure on how to do that because i can say as teachers too when we're trying to look up different ways to approach something if they don't get it the first time we go and we look up other teachers teaching that concept so use that as um, a help for you the other thing with it is you want to make sure your kids have a a separate space for learning. It doesn't mean they have to sit at a desk, but they should be at an area where they can not be distracted. Think of it kind of like your classroom um, where they can do their best work. So whether it's on the couch and they're laying down or on the floor, but it's a space that is just their classroom. Um, make sure you're um, continuing to have snacks and recess breaks. So I know Michelle goes into this with her video, but you do wanna make sure you have a schedule for the day, just like they have a schedule in school. And then in there, make sure you're having breaks. They're looking at the screen all day. So make sure like after 45 minutes of doing something or a half hour, whatever you think is best for your child, give them a break away from the screen, get them active and then bring them back to it. Um, you also want to make sure that um, you're kind of mixing screen time with old time learning mediums. So if you have the availability, if your kids have a hard, hard time looking at the screen because of the way it filters, um, if you have the option of printing out some of the work that they have from Canvas or from Schoology or whatever they're using, I would do that. I know a lot of schools also let you like go to school and get uh, your books and whatnot. So if you have the avail availability to read the book, 
rather than reading it on the screen, I would choose to do that. And then a big one, which I know I've had some talks with students at our school already, is don't let your kids treat this as a vacation. So you have to let them know that they still have the obligation of assignments, they still have the obligation of taking tests, and just because they're doing it online doesn't mean they get out of it. So just make sure you're kind of pushing that, that this is still school, even though it's at home. Uh, I know we have a lot of kids at our church who have IEPs. Um, you need to advocate for your child. I don't know what all the different districts are doing, but a lot of the assignments that they're pushing out don't have those modifications within the assessment or in within the assignment. So if your child has some kind of learning disability or output processing or whatever they have going on, make sure that you email their teacher and say, okay, I see all the assignments. What can the accommodations my child, do they have an extra day? Do they, need, do they only have to do half of the assignment that you posted um, or are they only doing half of the assignments that are posted? So just make sure if your child has an IEP that you are contacting their teacher because I don't know if all districts are actually saying that you have to have those modifications within the assessments. Um, be, one of the big things you need to do as well is be clear about your expectations at home. So as teachers, when we do anything new, we go through procedures, we practice, we go through procedures, we practice, we go through procedures and practice, and we go it over and over and over again. And so they're learning to learn again in a whole different way in your home. So you need to be setting those procedures and expectations at home. If they're doing it wrong, talk about what they did wrong and have them practice it again. So I know that's like the hard part because you're trying to work and manage a thousand different things, but if you have the, the option of sitting there giving them your, your procedures for, okay, you have 45 minutes to do this work. This is what I'm expecting you to do. This is what it should look like. And then like 10 minutes in, they're not doing the work. You need to stop them, go back over that procedure and set them at it again. So it's not fun for us when we have to do it. I know it's not gonna be fun for you, but setting those procedures are gonna be a huge thing for you. Um, another thing, especially when you're going into fourth grade and up is when you really need to be hitting on digital citizenship with your kids. So because we're using things like Canvas and Schoology and Google Classroom and they, all your kids now have the option of communicating to each other, you need to talk to them about what is the correct way to communicate on those devices. So if your child has a discussion board on Canvas or they have a discussion board on Schoology where they're their teacher says, okay, read this or do this, and I want you to comment to two people in the class about their responses, and they write fart, or oh, or they just say, oh, that's cool. I mean, you would be surprised what fourth and fifth graders put. Now, teachers have the option of removing those comments, but not before other kids see them usually. So make sure when you are talking to, to your child, when you're looking at their assignments, say, okay, when you go on this, this is like you are talking to them in front of an adult. This is how you are to respond. You are to be respectful. You're supposed to be a good digital citizenship, like good digital citizen. Um, fourth and fifth grade is where it starts to get really dicey with the content that they unfortunate, unfortunately know and things that they will put out. So just make sure that you're really keeping on your kids about that. If you want some good, like just short lessons to talk about at the dinner table, if you go to Common Sense Media, um, they have some really good lessons for you to just sit down with your kids and have conversations with. Um, I am going to, uh, I was gonna share my screen, but I'll throw this in the chat when we're done. Um, a lot of you, like you're, you're teaching and it's a whole different way of learning than when we were growing up, right? It's common, common core math, which parents hate, I love as a teacher because I will tell you I understand math so much better after teaching the new strategies and the way that they're they're teaching. It's just it's so hard for somebody who is just being thrown at it to understand it. So if you're having issues trying to understand how to teach this the new way of teaching or you don't know what kind of verbiage to use for your kids, um, there's some really good websites for you to um, to keep in mind. One is learning keeps going. Um, it's an online forum populated by volunteers and staff from ISTE and affiliates who answer questions and they provide guidance for parents. 
So if you have any question, you can email them and they'll shoot out an answer to you if you have any what, for whatever it is. Another one is Ed Surge. Um, it helps you move remote learning into your home. So it's another just really good forum if you have any questions to go to. Um, another framework to help parents is using technology to support learning at home. It's a simple tip for parent and young children. Um, it was just published this week and it's published in Spanish and English. So I know we have a lot of his, uh, Spanish speakers at our church and it includes advice on how to build positive tech tips or tech habits and what to look for when um, selecting different applications. Now, when you go to actually trying to teach your kids and you can't figure out the words to do it, but they need extra practice, some really good websites for your kids to use is Khan Academy. So um, I know a lot of kids already use that at school, but if you were not, or if they don't, Khan Academy, it's K-H-A-N Academy. Um, it offers, right now it's offering free courses to all grade levels to help students master subjects and accelerate their learning. So if your kids get stuck on a math problem, they'll give them a video to show them an example of how to solve a problem that's like it. And then they go back and they have to try to do one on their own. And they'll keep doing that until they actually solve problems at a mastery level. Um, Reading Rockets is a really great website for you to use for some other um, literacy components. So if they're struggling with whatever concept it is for the week, Reading Rockets would be a good one for that. Um, there is um, the National Virtual, National Virtual Manipulative Library. So if your kids are really tactile and they're struggling with math, um, if you go to the National Virtual Manipulative Library or Didax's Virtual Manipulatives, your kids can use 10 frames or um, pattern blocks. They can have online number lines, um, counting cubes, any kind of manipulative they use at school. Um, will be there virtually for them to use. So I, I would highly recommend that. We as teachers use that in the classroom all the time. Um, right now, and most of your kids probably have subscriptions to it already, but Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior. So if for some reason your school doesn't have it, which would be very shocking, you as a parent can get a free subscription right now to Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior, and they will teach your child a very simple concept in five to six minutes. They can take an easy quiz, a hard quiz, do an activity, create a concept map, um, actually have some reading pieces that are put into it as well. So it's a good, if your child is struggling with something, it's a good one to put them on. Um, <clears throat> there is something called coronavirus homeschooling, which is brand new, but um, it, it's offering parents free schedules and weekly lesson plans for kids. Uh, and parents can sign up for free access to resources and websites. So I would highly suggest that if you need some extra resources at home. Um, there's another one that also came up called Have, it's called Have Fun Teaching, which is a really great website teachers use, but they actually just created Have Fun Teaching Relief Packs. Um, and it has full access to offering relief packs with printable worksheets for grades um, preschool through fifth grade. And each relief pack covers a variety of subjects of English, math, and phonics. So it'd be another one just for if you need something else to help reteach your child or give them some extra information. So I have tons of other ones on here for your kids, but I'll send that out in the PDF so I'm not bombarding you with a thousand different uh, email, uh, websites. And then just some other things, just to keep in mind, you just need to be patient during this time. Um, you are not going to be able to teach like your child's teacher. It's just, it's not going to happen and you, as you know, they behave very differently from you as they, as they do for your, your child's teacher. So just be patient with them and you're going to have to reteach and you're going to have to um, sit down with them and maybe have to do a lot of redirection and that's, and that's okay. And it's okay for them to fail at what they're doing on the computer. Because if they fail at something on Canvas, the teacher can look at the assignment and be like, nope, you didn't do it right, kick it and kick it right back to them and they can do it again. So it is okay if they're making mistakes. Don't be afraid to Google a concept you don't know. As teachers, we do it all the time. I teach STEM and there's all kinds of new things that come out for me. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm gonna teach that at all. I Google it, I watch a couple of their teachers do it, and then I, then I can go and actually show my kids how to do it the right way. Um, make sure you're setting limits and going over expectations. We kind of talked about that earlier. Um, go over how to comment on discussion boards, and I'll say that over and over and over again. 
really push digital citizenship right now. It, I mean, this is the perfect time to do it. So I would be having those conversations a couple times a week. Um, let's see. Another one, and I'm sure a lot of your teachers are doing this already, but I know all schools are going to Zoom calls or they're going to um, Google Meet. So just make sure that you are setting your expectations for your child during that Zoom call. So during Zoom calls with your child's class, they should be seated. They should have a wall behind them so nobody can pass behind them. They should have all their clothes on, which you would think would be really funny, but we've had um, a couple conversations with teachers where kids are coming with their shirts off or getting dressed as they're on the camera. Um, we also said don't eat in front of the camera is one of the things we said for our students as well. So just make sure that you are setting those expectations for your kids as well. Tell them it's just like the classroom. Um, let's see. So just some extras for you, because that was one of my topics as well. Um, I am the STEM teacher at my school. So I'm always, I do the fun stuff and blow things up and make things disgusting and it's awesome. Um, so just some things, if you are just looking for some time fillers, yes, we want our kids to be bored and they have to learn what to do during boredom. But sometimes when you're in a meeting and you're working from home, you need something structured for them to do. So here are a couple of su suggestions I have. Breakout EDU does at home escape rooms and they're 45 to 55 minutes long and they're already created for you. So I believe they're giving free access to parents. If not, there's at least a, a couple of free ones per grade level. So they, they are digital escape rooms or you, they can actually do ones that are kit where you can go and get a few different locks and set up the escape room at home. And it, I will tell you, I've done it with all grade levels, kindergarten through fifth in 55 minutes. Sometimes it isn't even enough because they're so into it. So it's one to just keep them busy and quiet while you're working. Um, a couple other things, if you wanna just kind of front load your kid and then you have to get to work, um, I would do STEM read aloud. So what you'll do is read a short story to your kids just a picture book or if you're in a chapter book right now read a chapter of that book with them and then give them a project to do to solve a problem so one example would be read where the wild things are we all know that story and we know max has to get to the place where the wild things are and then come back one really good thing would have them they have to build a boat out of materials for max and it has to float so maybe it has to hold a certain amount of weight and then it has to actually go across the water. So they actually have to give it a sail and figure out how to get across. I did it in um, little tubs in my classroom. You could do it in the bathtub where they can test it. Um, that, that is like a good 30, 35 minute activity. Keep them quiet while you're working. Another one, um, if you ever read the book Ferdinand, so they can uh, read Ferdinand and then um, they can build a shelter for Ferdinand. And then actually, if it's nice out, like we said, it's gonna be 70 degrees outside next week give them two ice cubes. One ice cube sits outside the shelter, one ice cube sits in sh inside the shelter, and then they have to time it, and after 15 minutes, see which one melted the most, which one blocked the sun's rays the most. Um, Tacky the penguin, you could build him a shelter to get with an escape route to get away from the predators. Um, right now, we're in that, that season, spring season, where we're seeing all kinds of insects come around. So you can read the book, Bee Hotel, or it's called the bee tree and you can make have them make a bee hotel and post it at like bring it to a park and put it somewhere or put it in your yard and have a little bee hotel um right now i know your kids are probably going stir crazy and they're wanting to move everything around so you can um read the book i want a new room and then they can design their own new room and have the layout give them grid paper and then they can be counting and they're they're also talking about areas because they're looking at grids and how big their, their dresser is or how big their bed would be. But that, that's another one that just some things to keep them busy that's off a screen while you guys are working for a little bit if they're done with all their work. Um, one of my absolute favorites is Rube Goldberg. If you guys have never heard of Rube Goldberg, just look up some of his commercials or commercials based on him. So Rube Goldberg used to do simple do complicated steps to do a simple task. So for example, one of his fav like famous cartoons was 
to just um, wipe a napkin across his face. But to wipe a napkin across the face, when he pulled his arm, it hit a string, that string hit a ball, which went down a track, which hit a clock, which swung, which did something else, which did something else, which then made the, the napkin go across his face. So you can give your child a very simple task and say, I want you to launch this marshmallow, but you have to do it in nine steps. So they have to come up with nine steps that, and they can only touch the first one. So it all has to be um, chain reactions and they can go through it and it, that will take them forever. So it'll be a nice way to keep them nice and quiet while you're working as well. Um, <clears throat> So I have, again, I'll send like the PDF that has all different kinds of resources with that. And then I also have part of that PDF, um, just different resources for talking to your kids about COVID and what that looks like and why are we at home and why are we having to do school through the computer? So there are one, two, three, four, uh, nine resources on it just to help you guide those conversations as well. So I'll pop that into the comments when we're finished. But that's that's me. I'm done. Thank you, Mallory. I'm about to go figure out how to do a virtual escape room because that sounds super fun. <laughs> All right. So I interviewed Michelle Fulber yesterday. And so she just has some really great tips on scheduling. She homeschools for boys, which she'll talk about. Um, if you haven't had a conversation with her, she's always like the most encouraging person um, ever. And so I'm going to share that video with you guys. And then um, if you guys have any questions about anything, just continue to use the chat feature and we'll make sure that we get all of these resources, um, especially Melody's amazing thing of all these resources that you can do with your kids. We'll make sure that we get that to you. So let me figure out how to do this. yourself to all of us. <laughs> okay, um, my name is Michelle Felber, and I have been going to Waterline about two and a half years right now. And um, my husband Josh and I have been married almost 14 years. And I'm turning 40 this month. <laughs> Quarantined, don't know what to do. But so, um, but we have four children, all boys, and um, it was probably it took us. I'll, I'll be honest, it took us a while to get pregnant with our first child, and um, that was probably good for me. I needed to, in a way, have learned patience through some hardship, and um, and our birth was about the longest, kind of like yours, Claire, it was like the longest birth ever. <laughs> <laughs> all of that to say, through all of that, there was this kind of um, humbling realization that I felt like the Lord was telling me I was supposed to stay home with my kid, and so we took about a year to make that decision, and when I did, uh, we kind of took a leap of faith and we decided to do it. And um, the coolest part was that, I mean, the biggest fear was, oh my gosh, we're losing income. What are we going to do? And literally within two years of me saying no, quitting my job, um, the Lord provided the, oh, like basically what I made and more through Josh just getting like uh, promotions at his job. And so it was one of those where like, okay, this is kind of confirmation that this was supposed to happen. And then, um, then when it was time for my oldest to start kindergarten, we had that question, what do we, we want to do? And I just really felt like I wanted to homeschool. I had been a teacher, a high school teacher for about seven and a half years. So I kind of loved teaching ever since I was a kid. And I just, so I've been homeschooling ever since 2000 and I don't remember, five years ago. So, <laughs> and I've been doing it ever since. And there's been a lot of ups and downs in the midst of it. Um, a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of, just unknowns, but just really trusting that God has us on a path and just keep going with it. Wow. Well, I'm going to ask you some questions and maybe you can give us a little insight from your um, years of homeschooling for some new parents that are in this new transition and trying to figure out what this looks like. Um, so how would you schedule your day for your kids? And are there any advice or tips that you've had from learning what schedule works for you guys? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it also depends on if you have um, nursing babies or sleeping babies or toddlers or preschoolers in the mix of it as well because that does add some different dimensions to it but I think recognizing your own strengths helps so if you are a morning person 
then breakfast might be one of the best ways to start the day. So for us, we sit down at breakfast and do like a chunk. We call it, we like chunk out our day. So at breakfast, we have a chunk where I do a reading for each kid. So as they start coming down for breakfast, I just kind of do a reading for each one and like one other activity. And then they have time to play and um, well, I can do some of the breakfast chores and stuff like that. And then we have a, like an official start tour time. So each of them have their own chores they have to do. And then we like officially start our big chunk in the morning. And that's when each kid basically has a checklist that they can go through on their own pace. And I kind of, I, I'm a floater. I go from person to person. And some of them have independent work they can do by themselves and they don't pay me. And there's other times when there are, um, like I have to sit there and read with them or explain a grammar concept or something to them. And so it just depends on the day. And sometimes I literally feel like I'm a, I'm like constantly doing this the whole time. And I have, you know, multiple times, mom, 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 mom. So you have the moments of crazy, but you know, in your head, you're like, this is the schedule. And you know, my youngest is getting done with his faster. And then the next one, so they get done it, they finish it out in chunks. And then, um, we take a break again for lunch, and then at lunch, I usually read another story to them, so depending on what, what we're doing. And then um, after lunch, I have my two oldest have kind of a group assignment they do together, and so we do that. And then the best part of my take comes is I still make my kids, no, sorry, I take a nap time. And I make that important to my kids, because I say to them, like, you need to learn the ability to have quiet time by yourself, how they share rooms, because they're kind of not all together. But that's kind of what I call like the end of our school day. So mama takes her nap, spends some Jesus time, which I desperately need at that point. And then um, after that, we are pretty much free. So by two o'clock or earlier, we are like resting and just trying to relax and enjoy the rest of our afternoon. That's kind of our general day. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how do you balance the role of a teacher versus parent? And how was that like in the beginning and how did you figure out um, and kind of struggle with what that what that looks like? Well, part of my problem is that since I always wanted to be a teacher, that's so naturally ingrained in me that it's like even as a mom, I, I like teach through my days. So like if we were going on nature walks or something, I'd be like, guys, let's look at this lichen. Wow, it's so amazing. And like we talk about the nature stuff. And that teacher kind of always just comes in as my natural uh, bent as, as a mom. But I have had to learn a lot between expectations. Like a lot of the, the teacher expectations had to shift and listen to the Holy Spirit and be like, you are, you are um, frustrating your child. You are causing your child right now to have a temper tantrum because you're pushing so hard as a teacher that you're not seeing that his heart is saying, I need a break. And so a lot of, for me, had to shift from praying in the moment to just be like, God, why am I not getting through to this one? Why am I not, why is it not making sense? And uh, to be able to humble yourself enough to say, no, mom was wrong. I'm sorry that I pushed you too hard on this one and um, I wasn't respecting you enough to speak to you um, with love and I'm sorry. And I think, that's one of the most beautiful things is that when you try to take on both roles, you can push too hard in the teacher area. And then as the mom kind of comes back around and says, I am really sorry. But I'm so thankful for those times because I want them to see that I am not perfect and that I mess up all the time and that I need Jesus more than <laughs> I've given myself time out sometimes. Mom needs a time out. I'm going to go. I'll be right back. Um, so I think a lot of it is, yeah, just recognizing that in the end, your child needs to be loved unconditionally more than they need to produce things. So there have been days when, and my oldest has some anxiety and special needs things. So there were times when, especially when he was like in first grade, that I would say, you've got these 10 math problems. I mean, they weren't always easy, but they were like, let's say 10. And he thought in a second, he would go, oh, I can't do this, I can't do this. And he would panic and it, his panic looked like a temper tantrum for 45 minutes threw himself on the floor and just and didn't want to even be comforted he's like don't touch me you know so in those moments you really had to humble yourself to recognize like I can't be the perfect teacher and I'm, I'm not meant to be their perfect teacher but I can be their mom in this moment and say okay we're just going to be done with math you may have only gotten two problems done today but you did your best 
and we'll just tackle this again tomorrow. And there have been times I've had to close the books up and say, you need to go take a walk or go drive to a park and just say that that's all right. Like it's okay to say my love for you is more important than you getting this perfect problem. And um, yeah, so their grace, I think the teacher wants to kind of teach in everything, but the mom says, let's have some grace for their weaknesses because I hope that they have grace for me when I have my weaknesses. Awesome. That kind of goes into, um, you've always, I've been learning this personally to have grace um, for myself in this situation. So can you share a little bit about that? And just, I know that's a big um, passion point of you. You've always been encouraging to me in that. So I'd just love if you would just share that with everybody. Yeah, and this is my, my big thing that I had to learn over the years was I have had to let go of things like Facebook because it becomes this breeding ground of, of uh, comparison. And I think comparison, especially for women, and I can't speak to dads because I'm not a dad, but I feel like for women, comparison starts when you're pregnant. You're pregnant and these people are like, oh, well, what kind of birth are you going to have? And oh, I, oh, you're having drugs. Well, I had a doula and I had a perfect birth. And it's like, there's this comparison that happens. And, oh no, you're breastfeeding. I'm going to do a bottle. Like there's just this constant comparison that starts at the beginning. And the problem is if we let all the comparison get to us, then you, the voice of guilt and shame and condemnation starts to just keep itself on you. And you never think you're enough. And you never think that you're going to live up to what your expectations for yourself are. And so I think that, um, a lot of my growing had to come by letting go of hearing what other people thought and also my expectations for myself because I was a type A, I'm still a type A, a perfectionist in many different things. And um, I had to let go of the fact that my house was going to look pretty awful for many years when I had young children because I was surviving. I mean, I literally was in survival mode. And so you had to have the grace to say like, hey, I put clothes on the day. And I have the grace for myself to say, I brushed my teeth and that's okay. <laughs> um, and so there's the seasons, there's the grace for the seasons to recognize when you're in this, uh, under the age of five, like you, you literally are keeping a human alive. And if you kept them alive that day, then you succeeded and you won. And if you, if you manage to get a couple hours of sleep, that's a victory. And so you start to look at the seasons and think how, what is my victory in this season going to look like? And and it might be, I was telling you before, like the, the checklist. Like right now I create a checklist of four to five things that I would like to accomplish outside of school for the day. And if I manage to get all five of them, it's like, oh, we did it today. But if I got to two of them, it's like, yes, I got two of them. And so again, it's just forgiving yourself that you aren't going to be, you don't have the time that you used to have. And if for those who are working who've been working this whole time and now are home it must feel completely uncomfortable because at work you can get that list of even 15 or 20 things done and someone's patting you on the back saying great job and they might have given you a bonus for it they might give you a gift card because you did such a great job and you might walk home and be like i'm amazing but then you walk in the doors and there is no child that's going to come up to you and say, mom, thank you so much for that healthy meal you gave me today. That broccoli was amazing. Oh my gosh. And I feel like sometimes we have to give ourselves the grace that when we're at home, we may not get the whole list done and we may not be able to make our kids behave exactly like our neighbors, but that that's okay because we're not meant to. We're only meant to carry the load that, that we have for us. So I think the biggest grace I had to give myself was to recognize, like, what does my day look like for me? And that's okay. And if I don't post a picture about it on Facebook, then I know that God saw my Facebook. And that's all that really mattered to the end. But I did want to say one thing about your days, because to prepare for your day, you really have to start the night before. So one thing that I've had to learn, too, is to say, like, I need to take my clothes out the night before. Um, almost in a way to prepare for the day because we, even though we might be stay-at-home moms and like wearing yoga stuff all the time, it's still a professional job. There's still a lot to this job. There's a lot of titles and things like that to it. And sometimes we need to recognize that um, 
we need to dress for the part. And sometimes that means like, I'm going to put makeup on today, not because I feel like it, but because I want to put my best foot forward. I want to say to my kids, I, I want to invest in myself because I, I want to have fun with you guys today, but I want to look good doing it. <laughs> and then it's okay to do that. It's okay to look at your kids and be like, you can watch Curious George for a little while. I'm going to take a shower because they smell. Now my kids are older, so it's a little easier to do, but sometimes it's just the time where you say, yeah, we're just going to do this. And in the morning, again, for myself, what I had to learn was if I didn't purposely wake up earlier than my children, I was doing my children a disservice because I kept thinking of, um, like if I was in a race and I showed up to the starting block as the minute the, the gun goes off, I'm going to be a little bit behind those other racers. They're already racing and going, in, going into the race. And I'm kind of like, oh, here we go, here we go. And I feel like if I wake up at the same time as my kids, we're racing like that. It's like, oh, we got to go, we got to go. And forgetting that there, it involves preparation. Like we need preparation for our day. And some, for some people, that might mean I need three cups of coffee before the day starts. And for some, it might need, mean like this, this. <laughs> <laughs> if I can't have this in the morning, then it's almost like I'm walking into the day naked because I don't have my gear on to be grace filled and to be full of love. And I know the days, the days that I don't spend with God, I walk into that day and I just feel, I, I, I'm not patient with my kids. I'm not kind. And I told my kids, this. I've said, look, you recognize that mommy's pretty crabby. Can you please just say, mom, go spend time with Jesus. I want them to say to me that so because sometimes I don't see it or I'm just being stubborn or whatever but um I did want to read you a verse because I thought of this um because I, I just remember those years of young children and I this was like a life verse to me but in Isaiah 55 um he's in Isaiah or I think it's the Lord speaking he says come all you who are thirsty come to the waters and you who have no money come buy and eat come buy wine and milk without money and without cost why spend money on wisdom, right? And he keeps going, he's going, he's going. And um, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. And keeps going, keeps going. But the whole thing is prepare yourself with the water that, that Jesus wants to give you for your day. And you will be set. Like you might have to constantly pray throughout the day, but if you start off your day filling up with him before you fill up with all the noise and chaos of kids and the jobs and all the stuff that's going on, that's what's going to bring you the peace that you need. They talk about the, you know, the peace that passes understanding. Well, what does that mean? That means that you have been filled up with God's peace. You can't manufacture that yourself. It just kind of comes from him. And throughout your day, when you have a mess up or when you just have a, a, a moment, it's just breathing that in just to say, okay, God, I am thirsty right now. I am thirsty for you. And I need you right now so bad. I can feel it in this thirst and this hunger. And um, sorry, I'm pulling out here, but this is a story. I just want to tell one more story from Matthew 10, verse um, 42. It says, and if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, Truly, I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. Um, and there was a moment when I think I had my third child was crying in the middle of the night. I went in there exhausted. They're crying in their bed. They're like, okay, this is, I need to feed you. I'm exhausted. And I felt the Lord tell me in that moment, you are doing Matthew 10 verse 42. You are giving this child a cup of cold water. You are ministering to this person. Um, through my love, not through your love. And so it's like in that moment, it's like this humbling of like, okay, God, this isn't me. This isn't me performing and doing all the right things. This is me saying, I can't do this alone. So you have to do it through me. And so I think that's what I had to remember every time that I felt like this is not fair. I don't want to wake up again. Or I don't want to have to make another meal today because I'm exhausted and I just want to go in the other room. It's that reminder of like, no, I am ministering to this little child who carries the love of Jesus in ways that I don't even understand. And um, so I think that some of that grace that you talked about, like, I think it comes from just the recognition of when we see these little children as being bearers of Christ and who need Christ in their hearts 
then it shifts our thinking from like, okay, what can I get you to do today? But how can I, how can I enjoy your presence in the midst of that? So um, one book I loved was this book. I don't know if that shows up or not, but this is the brother Lawrence. <laughs> and, um, and he kind of put some perspective too about like, when you are doing your dishes in the middle of the day, and you're just like, I've done 5,000 dishes today. And you're like feeling the anger rise up. But that's a moment for prayer. Like it's okay to use those times to pray and to just seek him and anyway. So that's a lot. But all of that to say, we quiet the voices of the world around us. Maybe that means we fast from Facebook for a day or we turn it off yeah. until 4 p.m. or something. And you just allow the Lord to work through you. Meet with him where you can. Then to me, that's a successful day because you just walked in his presence. Hold his hand and said, I can't do this alone, but I can do it with you. Awesome. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing all that with us. Um, I know that you've been an encouragement to me and um, other parents and mothers during this time. And so I thank you for being able to spend this time and to share this word with us um, about your experience, but also more importantly, about being present with our kids and really, um, leveraging the time. And even though like I can speak me, like because I'm exhausting with my toddler and balancing work. Um, but even just hearing you talk about spending time with the Lord and giving it to Him um, is very encouraging to me. So thank you for sharing with us. Yes, thank you. And I think in the end, we have to remember that 10 years from now, they're not going to remember the five math problems they had to do and that we pushed them to do. They will remember, though, the hugs that we gave them and the time that we said, you know what, let's go take a walk outside or let's go and and just read some books and cuddle on the couch because I think in the end that their relationship with you is more important than what's on their report card or what's or even or even the work that the boss is trying to get you to do sometimes it's okay to just say I'm doing my best I'm doing my best and have grace for yourself in that as well so awesome. well thank you <laughs> He's my child. He just woke up from a nap. <laughs> All right. Well, that was Michelle's little bit that she had to share with us today. And so we're going to go into Melody giving us a different perspective. She works with older kids. Um, and does the foreign language stuff. I saw that you shared that in the chat, just different <laughs> ways to learn a foreign language during this time. So take it away, Melody. Yeah, so um, I teach mainly in the high school level. So my kids are a little bit more self-maintained. And like Mallory was talking earlier, like um, our school also has like a learning management system. And um, I have done a couple of Zoom calls with my students myself. And one of the things that I probably would recommend, like no matter what age level you, your kids are, like going in with them and looking over their like schedule. And for high school, it's totally gonna look different than for elementary. Um, for example, like in our school, like I give an assignment, I put all my assignments on like Monday and I give them the assignments for the entire week. And some of those assignments will take multiple days and if your kid is only looking at their like to-do list and only looking at like what they need to accomplish for like that one day, they're not gonna be successful accomplishing a project that's gonna, that I have planned for them to take multiple days. So just like being aware as a parent, like that um, some of the high schools and junior highs are thinking more of like project-based learning and just like giving kids things to do that they can do on their own, but that's gonna take a multiple step process. Um, so that's something like I would recommend. There's a, usually a calendar view in Canvas or other LMSs where you can see like the week. Um, one of the things that I've noticed a lot of my high schoolers are craving is community. Um, I did a Zoom call with one of my classes and I probably had just about every single kid on there. And by the end of like, 
the conversation like we got done with like what we needed to do but they're like can we just stay on a little bit longer like I just miss our class and so we were just talking about like day-to-day -day struggles that they were having with all of this um and like just getting together and just like having community and it's interesting because even though my class is like this was a class of seniors so it was exceptionally emotional by the end of the conversation I think everyone was like shedding a couple of tears because they realized like we're not going to see each other and like this is the end of our school year and like this is how we're ending our senior year which is like super disappointing for them um because they had so many plans already of like you know prom and graduation and open houses and those are things that like might not even happen anymore and um when they had that reality they were like they were like emotional about it like they are going through a grieving process and as a parent like your kids are going to grieve this and you need to be aware of that and you need to give them the space to grieve that like that whole experience and like if your kid is having a really really hard time with it like do not like hesitate looking for or asking for help whether it's having a zoom call with their youth pastor or their pastor um to help them process that emotional process like grieving um or even doing like online therapy sessions like kids are gonna be sad about this like they're gonna be depressed about this and that's like um something that we sometimes like don't realize that like how emotional our kids really are especially when they're teenagers and everything is like amplified to like 10,000 um it's like I have like a huge blessing that I get to see my high schoolers every single day and so I can tell like the minute a kid walks into my door that they're having a bad day and I don't even have to like have a conversation with them I can just tell that from their the way they're acting the way they look at me whatever it is and you as parents do the same thing. You see your kids every single day, like whether they're in kindergarten or in a senior in high school, you know your kids and trust your instincts. And like, if they think they're having a bad day, like ask them about it. Like they wanna talk about it and they wanna like process that with someone. And it's really important that they like have the opportunity to do that. Um, and then like my other thing is like, because they're so craved for community, um, try to find different ways for like, them to create that. Um, some of my kids are even tired of their families. That's like one of the things like one girl was like telling me, she's like, um, if we all survive this week, it will be a miracle because my brothers are driving me up the wall and I can't even be in the same room with my mom or like different things like that. Cause they are so used to leaving their house and being with their friends and having their own personal space and having their own personal, um, place to go. And they can't escape anything like they're stuck at home and it's not like they can like go meet their friends anywhere they have to like quarantine and they have to be apart from each other and as much as like facetime and social media like helps um i think like as parents like it's really great for you to try to create like other opportunities for them to see their friends so like if you have a younger kid like maybe see if you guys can um zoom like with like some of their friends from their class um if your kid's a little bit older and can drive or can't drive maybe doing just a drive by like their best friend's house like is such a great way for them to like still like have that human interaction and get out of the house a little bit because everyone's going stir crazy um, and I think this is where we really need to just like help our kids not be so stir crazy, but then like, because we wanna be protect everyone by staying quarantined, but like providing opportunities where you can still be quarantined, you can still be safe, um, but you can still see people. Because if they can just drive by their best friend's house and talk from to their actual best friend, even though it's six feet away and they're in their car and their friends in their driveway, that's just going to mean like so much more special for them. Um, and so make like a world of difference for them because I, I can't tell you how many times my kids are just saying like, I just miss people. I just miss seeing people. I miss being around people. I had a, a kid that I'm tutoring with and he's, he was telling me, he's like, I even miss going to church. Like, something that I typically don't enjoy doing all the time, like waking up early and all this stuff. He's like, I miss it. I miss seeing people. I miss seeing my friends. I miss talking to my youth pastor. I miss all these things. And so like just really encouraging 
um, your kids to like seek out those like communities still. Um, of course, I know a lot of our kids are on like social media right now. Um, I don't know if like my kids are obsessed with TikToks. I don't know about your kids. All my students are obsessed with TikToks. That's all they want to do is these dances. And I think one of the greatest things that I've seen, even in like some of my projects, I put it in there, like get your families involved with your assignments. Like if you have to do a video, like have your mom and dad or your brother and sister in your video. Um, as a parent, I think it's really important that like you go in there and like see what they're interested in and try to be a part of that. So if your kids are really obsessed with creating TikTok dances, find one that you can like do with your kid. And like, I've seen so many kids um, because I make, I make funny videos for my kids to like respond to me. And I just told them like, oh my gosh, I'm like obsessed with this new thing. And like, I need new ideas. Like what are some ideas of things I could do during quarantine? And it's so funny to see like these kids telling me, oh, I made this like TikTok video with my dad and it was awful, but it was so much fun. We had so much fun doing it. It took us like three hours and the dance was like 30 seconds, but it took, they spent like three hours with their family learning a really silly dance um, because that's like what they want to do. They want to do these silly, funny things. Um, you know, they want to do like TikToks and they want to do like, Snapchats and they just want to like have some normalcy to their um, routine and um, yeah so I would like really encourage you get involved in what your kids like if they're reading a book for English maybe read the book with them and then discuss it like if they're struggling with something in math like for sure like you want to try to help them as much as you can but you might not be able to do everything um, I loved what Mallory mentioned earlier with Khan Academy Khan Academy even has like stuff all the way through high school level. Um, there's just a, a bunch of different ways for you to like get involved in what your kid is doing and just being aware of what they're doing. Um, another huge thing I think that like, especially parents with older kids um, can struggle with is setting that routine. Um, I know like from like what I've seen in like my neighborhood and what I've you know heard from some of my students, um, a lot of my students are like, staying up until three or four o'clock in the morning. And that's not necessarily the best thing for them. Um, and you want them to treat like this time that they're um, at home like school. So setting those like boundaries and setting those deadlines, like don't treat it like a coronacation, which is what my students call it. They call it the coronacation. Um, they all think they're on vacation with the homework, which I'm like, this is not, the same thing um so it's like setting those boundaries for your kids and like making sure that your um your child knows that like okay like yes you can sleep in a little bit but like I don't want you sleeping in it until two o'clock in the afternoon and like yes I know you didn't go anywhere but personal hygiene is still important you still have to shower and you still have to do these things and then also like the same thing with elementary kids like how um, Mallory said setting up those breaks and setting up those different things for your kids to do that's still important in the high school level and even middle school like middle schoolers have just as much energy if not more energy than like elementary kids because they have other stuff that they're like dealing with they're like bodies are changing and it's, it's yeah I call like I call middle schoolers like toddlers they are like the toddler years of like high, like when your kids are growing up, whatever you remember your toddler doing, like the weird, like figuring out the walking thing, they're doing that same exact thing, but now they like can walk, but they're trying to process like new things. They're like, I don't know how to do this. My body's weird. And so like have your kids go for walks, go and like do something outside. Um, still be safe, like with the social distancing. I know a lot of state parks are like free right now. Maybe take a day and you know, maybe you do your reading in a park, you know, keeping distance from people, or maybe you take your reading out to your backyard, um, just doing something different to like, just get them outside and get them moving still. Or maybe this is a time where you like, you don't want to like work out, but your kid needs to work out. So like, you're going to be like doing workout videos with your kids. Um, I mentioned earlier, the Spanish mama, she has a ton of like yoga and Zumba videos um that are set for like elementary age kids 
or in Spanish, but there's stuff out there where you can be doing those activities with your kids. So um, trying to like create like those sense of community, even within your family. And this is a great time for you to like your and your kids to get to know each other a little bit more. Um, one of the assignments I did earlier in the school year was I had my high schoolers, um, we as a class, we came up with a group of questions and it was like a list of 25 questions and about like high school and high school experience and things like that. Um, and I had them go and call their grandparents and interview their grandparents um, and ask them like all these different questions about their grandparents and their grandparents like high school experience. And it was so cool because so many of my kids didn't know like I had no idea my grandpa like lettered in four different sports or I didn't know that like my grandma um, like went to prom with her best friend and like did all these different things. And it was so cool for the kids to like share these um, moments with their grandparents and learn more about their grandparents. Um, but you can do the same thing with your kids at home. Like there's things that you did in high school that your kids may never have known about. Um, that would be like great for them to like have like those memories. And like, this is a great time for you to share those ideas or share those experiences that you had when you were younger and things that they're going through. Because in reality, like, there's not a whole lot of um, generations that have experienced what our kids are experiencing. And so for them to hear a little bit of like, what you experienced and how different it was. And I mean, when I was in high school, like, that was when 9-11 happened. And that changed, like, the way I experienced high school and the way I experienced the world after. And that's me like my students are going to have these stories now of like what coronavirus did to them um and how it changed their high school experience and so like i think it's a great time for like for us families you create these different bonds and you like create these different conversations um for you to like your kids to get to know you um and to create these relationships with them so that they like start seeing you not only as like a parent but like as a person and I think sometimes my students forget that their parents are people um they think of them as this like separate alien entity like they're the people who tell me I can't do things or try to keep me safe or you know provide x y and z for me but they don't like realize that like you were in high school you were in college or trade school or whatever like you had a life before them and I think the more that you can create those connections with your kids is like going to be um great and then I'm trying to think of one more thing I wanted to mention. Oh goodness. There's just so, yeah. I think, yeah, just like creating these like moments of community in like creative ways. Um, you know, going, doing workout videos with your kids, driving by their best friend's house, um, doing Zoom calls. I mean, they just miss each other. As much as I miss my kids, I know they miss me. And, um, and teachers everywhere are missing their students. Like we want to be with our kids. We don't like this. We're not on vacation. And I think another thing that parents really need to like remember is yes, you are going to fail at this. And yes, your kid is going to fail at this. And that is totally fine. Like we as teachers are not expecting perfection. We know that our kids may not be where we want them to be at the end of the school year. And that is totally fine. And Teachers nationwide know that this is going on. And we are, I, at least for me, I'm already planning, okay, like I'm gonna have to think of different ways how I can um, reteach information or reiterate new things to them. Like we're already thinking of like next year and how we can possibly like fill those gaps and fill those um, different types of um, spaces where they're like, we know they're gonna be lacking. And that there are certain things that like I know for me, like my students, um, I can't replicate. You know, you can't replicate everything that you do in a classroom, um, like the community, like um, all of the like face-to-face -face interaction. You can't replicate that without being in a physical classroom. And so like trying to create some of those moments where your kids can either talk to their friends or like doing things together as a family are really gonna create some um, 
strong, like lasting, like moments and things like that for them. Um, and don't be afraid to like break out your like card games and puzzles or whatever. Like your kids just want something to do. And one thing I've actually heard a lot of from my kids, which is kind of shocking as of late, is a lot of them are getting tired of social media. Like, they're like, I'm running out of shows to watch on Netflix. I'm running out of shows to watch on Hulu. I don't want to like, their sports are canceled. My life's over. I can't go to the gym. Like they are open to new ideas and trying new things. So this would be a great time to like, as a family, start playing games, do something new. Um, if your kids are a little bit older, like, I don't know, maybe teach them how to play euchre or poker. Um, so this is, <laughs> sorry. No. <laughs> so this is a great time for you to like break out some of those things um, um, so that they can kind of like learn some of those um, and have some of those experiences because they want to. They want to do something else besides sit in front of their screen all day. And I have had so many kids who are tired of sitting in front of a screen because they do it for school, they do it for their friends, um, they want to do something else, and they want to, like, they want to go for walks. They want to. They may not say it, but they want to do it. They and like, don't be like, don't be afraid to like use your mom card and be like, look we're going for a walk as family and that's okay. And you're gonna go with us and you're gonna have fun and you're gonna leave your phone at home and we're just gonna go and we're just gonna do it. It's gonna be fine. Um, don't be afraid to use that mom or dad card and like have the kids um, step away from their screens. So yeah, but um, yeah, you know your kids, like go with your gut, go with what your heart's telling you, go where the spirit's leading you, like you know what they need. Um, try to create fun, like, activities for them where they can build community um, and just kind of like uh, help them like process all of this. You know, it's, it's going to change the way we see the world and it's going to change the way the world um, sees things now into the future. Um, and I think also like this, at least for my age kids, high schoolers, this kind of provides them a huge um, idea of what, other possibilities they have. You know, since these kids are doing things online, um, this is like a great way for them to just learn new skills. Um, you know, maybe your kid struggles with school and, you know, maybe for college, they want to do a couple online courses or this provides like an, a, a different opportunity for them to like explore other options for education or even just like learn something new in general. Like I said, like learning a new language or um, I put a site on there, instruct Instructables. And it's just like different how-to steps on how to create different projects at home. And it's from everything from like baking crafts to like STEM. So you can be creating like 3D printing type things. It's really cool. Um, just to, like something to get your kids to do something a little bit different and like um, outside of like the like screen. Um, one other thing I would tell parents to do is check out how your kids are communicating with their teachers. Um, the amount of times that I get students who email me and I know it's like they're texting me where instead of writing the word please, I just get the PLS. This is a great opportunity for you to teach your kids how to effectively communicate with other adults. Um, it's really interesting how many kids don't know how to communicate, whether it's um, in a phone call or like a Zoom meeting or, um, or even like an email and sound like how they can communicate with others and sound like knowledgeable or not that you have to be formal but like having a you know an actual complete sentence and punctuation marks and capitalization um this is a great time for like to work on those types of skills it's just amazing how many times i get emails from students and i'm like i don't even know what those letters mean together and then i have to like look it up i'm like oh why did you just that's not an effective way of communicating <laughs> so yeah um, help your kids know, like learn how to communicate with their teachers, communicate with their needs, 
if they're struggling with something, no matter what age level they are, um, it's great for your kids to start being an advocate for their own education and their own educational process and journey. If you're in first grade or you're in like a senior in high school, it's always great for your kids to start being advocates for themselves and their needs. So if the kid's not understanding something uh, and they would like to do a Zoom call with their teacher, like okay, like we're gonna do a Zoom call with your teacher, like let's ask for that, let's um, see how we can um, ask for like that type of information or you're not understanding something, okay, well what's a good solution for this? Okay, we're gonna ask your teacher. So here, let's like let's draft an email together or let's send her a message together um, so that you can kind of like figure out how your kid can best advocate for themselves. And so your kids start empowering themselves and seeing their education as like their own like process and journey. Um, I think the more we empower kids to like um, voice their needs, the better. Um, so yeah, so I probably said a lot. I hope that's not too No, that's, that's great. I yeah. definitely can second that I, we go around with our Zooms with the kids and they get to tell like their highlight of the week. And a lot of it has been like playing games with their families or getting outside. Like they don't say like, I was on FaceTime with my friend for five hours today. Like that's not ever what they say. It's always when they're like doing something like either with their family or they got to get outside and be creative. That's always the thing that they just celebrate together. So thank you guys for sharing this morning. Thank you guys for um, being here and being part of this webinar. I'm excited to be able to share this um, with other people. You guys have provided us with so many resources and different ideas and fun stuff that we can do just to um, make the most of this time. And I just love each of you a hit on this just the importance of it not being perfect and that your kids are going to fail and that it's not going to look the way that it's the, like supposed to look in your head. Um, but just that we get to really cherish this time and we get to make memories with our kids. And at the end of the day, that's what they're going to remember. They're going to remember that you stayed up late playing Monopoly with them or mm -hmm. that they got to build this really awesome STEM like project that, took them nine steps to shoot a marshmallow across the room, you know, like they're going to remember those things. And so um, thank you guys for each hitting on that truth. I placed a survey in the chat um, just for parents so we can kind of fill, fill out um, what the ages of your kids and just where you feel overwhelmed or where we can help and su um, support you and encourage you during this time. And so um, we'll meet together. We're already in contact with other teachers for maybe tutoring if that's an option um, that you would need in certain areas. We have a lot of um, teachers within our network of Waterline um, who would be willing to spend 30 minutes with your kids on different concepts if you feel overwhelmed with how to teach them. They could probably do it really quick and just have that one-on-one -on -one session or group session, whatever that looks like. So if you guys would just take a moment and fill that out. Um, and I have this recorded so that we can share it with other people. So I want to respect your time, but thank you guys so much for being here today. Um, I hope this was encouraging and exciting and let you know that you're not alone is what we really want you to know is like everybody is in this everyone is feeling overwhelmed in different aspects of this world that we're living in right now um, but we as waterline want to just support and encourage you and resource you and we have so many people um, even melody and um, mallory just sharing those resources in the chat and just different ways where you're like, I remember they mentioned something that I don't know where it is. So just make sure um, that you um, get all those and I'll make sure to put all those in something and send them out to you guys. So thank you guys so much. And I hope you have an awesome Saturday.